Right. Hello and welcome to this year's election hustings. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Charlie and I'm the current Student Life President. And tonight we'll be asking questions to our Student Life President candidates, Ahmed Elhanna and Ben Wilkins. In a moment, they will introduce themselves for two minutes and then we'll get going with the questions. Please feel free to show them support in the comment section on Instagram Live. For those of you that sent in questions, it is important that they have been asked by the student body at St Mary's University and accurately reflect, reflect the voice of the 2020-2021 cohort. There will be five questions in total and the candidates will have two minutes to answer each of them. So let's begin. If you'd both like to introduce yourselves and then I will let you know when the two minutes are up. Ben, if you'd like to begin. Awesome. Um, right, so my name is Ben Wilkins. I'm currently a PSE student. 23, um, bit of football and badminton, um, and a, like you've probably seen a few others. Um, main reason I'm running for it is that from what I've seen with student life prayers and what you can get from the role, you can make student enjoyment, student general, getting through it a more enjoyable experience. So, I mean, from experience, my first week at uni, I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't think I was going to really last it out. Found a few groups, found a few different things and kind of found like if I can do that, I want to make that possible for a lot of other people. So you'll probably see with this whole thing, there's three points that I'm going to go on about. It's three core fundamentals to just make student life enjoyable. And that's where you can eat, where you can sleep and where you're able to meet. So those three points, you'll see them throughout my whole manifesto and everything like that. But yeah, in general, they're the three that I think are most important. And Ahmed, if yep. you like, you yeah. uh, hi there, guys. Uh, those that don't know me, but well known around campus, my face living three years on campus. But yeah, my name is Ahmed Alhana. Uh, I'm from Gibraltar, uh, small British territory. Uh, overseas island you could call it um 30 000 people um left home when i was 18 came over to uni alone without my family um came to study sports rehabilitation um and yeah what can i say uh 21 as well um but yeah going back to that first first week in, in uni uh i had those butterflies wanted to go back home uh i was not used to the this kind of society the change in society between home and between the uk uh, which gave me a lot of fears, uh, worries. Um, and that is the main thing that is making me run for this role, uh, increasing the student experience and how we feel and that independence that we, we get when we come to university. So, yeah, um, I'm currently in my third year of sports rehab, uh, finishing it off, hopefully, if all goes well and, and doesn't world, the world doesn't end. Um, but, yeah, um, my, my main points I'll mention later, uh, but it's improving the student experience. I believe that the university student experience is something that is important uh, in your career, in your life and in general. Uh, and if you don't have it um, kind of well, uh, then the, the student experience won't be as good as it could be uh, at university. But yeah. Well, thank you very much for uh, both of your introductions. Um, so we will now be beginning the questions. Um, just for everyone watching, uh, we're trying to make this as fair as possible. So the way that we're going to be doing it is going to be alternating the order of who answers first. Um, as Ben introduced himself first, we will begin with Ahmed. Um, so question one, what are the ways that you would work alongside societies to promote fundraising for charities? So one of uh, my points on the manifesto is specifically targeted on societies. Uh, being a committee member of the International Society um, and seeing a lot of kind of uh, events, uh, charity events that we wanted to uh, organise this year, but unfortunately was not able to go through due to the pandemic. Uh, one of them was uh, a walk, uh, just around like park walks, park runs, uh, and kind of raise money for charity that way, um, and other kind of different uh, little kind of campaigns, um, depending on what charity wanted to raise. But now seeing the pandemic and seeing how everything's gone online, um, Honestly, there's a lot of potential to use Zoom, for example, to organize charity events. I personally um, organized, along with my brother, uh, we've got like a, a, a page, a group, a community back at home in Gibraltar called Muslim Youth. And we organized the Ramadan Unity Fast, 
uh, where not just Muslims fast, but literally all religions. And it just brings that community feel together. And at the same time, we raise money. We raise money for uh, cancer research, uh, which is something that I've done already and willing to do. Uh, because as, as, as I always say, uh, volunteering is, is something that is needed and something that is very important because we always get in life, but we need to also give. I was muted. Thank you very much for that, Ahmed. Um, and Ben? Yeah, so um, in terms of societies and charity work, for the last two years, I've been uh, president of badminton. During that, there's been quite a few kind of examples of when the charity work does come in. And the structure that has kind of worked throughout that, it's quite easily um, able to mimic that for a society setting. Um, although I've not been a part of many societies myself, what I've had is quite a few friends who've been in them, kind of dipped and dabbed between them. And from what I've seen, the structure is as easy to mimic that sense of take the charity, usually, you know, with the uni, pick in a certain few and then uh, picking one and working on it. I mean, one of my manifesto points is a society spotlight. That's been happening a bit more frequently now. But I do think getting that society a bit more recognition in the way that sport clubs do. I found that with badminton, if we do any type of charitable event, it's very much promoted very quickly, whereas it's less seen by societies, even though it is quite prominent. So just getting that similar, yeah, similar spotlight for societies as much as sport clubs. Um, is that all? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Lovely stuff. Right. So we'll briefly move on to question two. Uh, ben, you'll be answering this one first, followed by Ahmed. Um, question two. Do any of the candidates have intentions to create more diversified societies? So um, with the society, for me personally, um, I'm quite lucky in the sense of a lot of my ideas in terms of for this, for example, or over badminton. I believe in making a committee or a campaign team for this uh, where you get a lot of feedback and you get a lot of different ideas. So if I told you I had all the ideas of all the different societies personally already, I'd be lying to you. Um, so I believe in kind of getting a student voice. It's right now, it's as easy as, yeah, nominate a society, kind of get the idea, but a lot of people have the idea, but don't want to get it out there. By making it a spotlight, by making it there, even just start a little question box on Instagram. What society do you want to see? Put it in there. If there's enough of them, let the uni make it, contact those people, make it a thing. It takes one person to be, you could be anonymous in that sense, or just, it's not easy to get someone to come out and say, I want to make this society because I don't know how many people are going to back them. So it helping with that is, well, it allows for more diverse societies. Thanks very much. And Ahmed. Yeah. Um, so um, one of my manifesto points actually targets this uh, section of uh, diversity and um, kind of tackling and challenging uh, all the current um, kind of barriers that we have um, in university, for example. Um, but throwing it back to when I was young, um, I've gone through a lot of um, kind of um, pain of ignorance. Uh, I've gone through uh, implicit bias, uh, people judging me because of my religion, uh, people judging me because I don't know a bit more time than them, uh, people judging me because uh, my parents came from Morocco and they weren't originally British. Um, and that honestly hurt me when I was young. Um, and growing up and being called, like in Gibraltar, we call uh, what called Janito. Um, and a lot of my friends would be like, oh no, you're not Janito, but you're not like Gibraltarian. You're like kind of half Moroccan, half Gibraltarian. So it felt like I was segregated and there weren't a lot of, there wasn't a lot of diverse kind of diversity around that, that subject back then. So coming to university and um, um, kind of experiencing within my first week, um, someone uh, who was racist towards me, uh, someone who said, uh, during my first week, uh, reiterating re it, um, it, honestly, I just felt like picking up my bags and going back home. I had a fright, I was like, is this, if this is uni, I don't want to come back again. Um, and because of that kind of racism, uh, just because I was foreign and I was not from the UK. Um, but yeah, uh, my kind of um, 
ideas that I have in plan for next academic year um, is campaigns, um, campaigns to do from recently, we've had a lot of notice on um, Asian discrimination uh, and kind of similar to like Black Lives Matter, but now um, a lot of kind of Asians are being targeted, uh, being kind of blamed and pointed finger at because of COVID, some stupid stuff. Um, because at the end of the day, we're all human beings and we shouldn't be doing things like that. We are, we're supposed to kind of live with each other, support each other and help each other in any way possible, no matter your color, no matter your faith and no matter your background. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll stop there, time's over. Thank you very much, that was a quick two minutes. <laughs> um, right, so once again, flipped. Um, Ahmed, you'll be answering first. Mm -hmm. um, question three, how do you plan on engaging with Kamita students if COVID is to be an ongoing factor? Yeah, so I had the plan uh, in, in kind of uh, involving commuter students uh, and not just them because I consider them as a forgotten students the commuters PhD students and master students or postgrad students because I personally feel living on campus for three years all I see getting involved are undergrad students um, so one of my ideas is um, to get um, like a big uh, well, hopefully uh, this is post pandemic but um, a big event just to kind of get everyone back in terms and back to kind of reality so one big event on campus uh similar to the summer ball uh but this is kind of we'll call it like welcome ball uh get everyone in uh those that have departed uh, those that are graduating this year that have missed out on almost a year and a half get them back uh get kind of interacting with master students with basically everyone that have, has missed out in this year and a half of this pandemic but virtually we can also do is um certain like um kind of zoom parties uh, I don't know if you guys have done it before, but um, I did one recently with my degree with sports rehab. Uh, we got a lot of students in, uh, not just from my course undergrad, but also uh, master students, uh, threw them in there, had a little chat, played some card games, um, and yeah, had a bit of a laugh, you know, kind of getting that vibe out, getting, you know, uh, getting used to that, that rhythm, that routine of kind of social life that we used to have, and now it's gone somewhere. Um, but yeah, uh, through Zoom and hopefully post-pandemic, many, many, many events to come. Thanks very much. Um, and Ben? Yeah, I mean, um, hopefully, obviously, this won't be an issue that we have to face. But if it is, I like to think that the a similar thing in the sense of a society and the sense of a sports clubs, um, I know a lot of people did uh, quite heavily pushed by Sports St Mary's, was kind of like workout Wednesdays um, and just keeping a regular routine of an online, pretty much what we're doing now, and similar to what Arvid was saying then, of regular meetings. We did a one with the Lussell boys uh, of workout Wednesdays of literally just turning up. It'd probably be half an hour of actually working out. That's why a few of us are in the shape we are now. But chatting for a good 20, 30 minutes after that and just not really, it's just more of a social side of it. So it was keeping that sense in, tried to do something similar with badminton. So for commuting students, just get them involved, get them spotlight, like get all these societies spotlighted. It doesn't matter who you are, you will have some sort of interest. And I want everyone's interest to have somewhere that they can put it. So find that place, even if it's your course, and have those regular places, which isn't just lectures, isn't just stuff where your brain's being forced to work, just a place where you can chat. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Um, right then, on to question four. Once again, uh, flipped. So Ben, you'll be answering first. Um, as a small university, there is likely to be a limited budget for events, campaigns and initiatives. How do you plan on working with the Students Union staff to achieve a wider range of student activities? Okay, so um, for my kind of plans now, obviously we've had a year of, unfortunately due to, well, no one, it, we've had nothing that we can really do. So my kind of idea to go into it is not to rush anything too quickly in terms of events. Everyone's gonna enjoy what they're coming back to and there will be events there. But to get wider students in and get a big engagement in terms of this, um, for me, it is that, coming back to those principles I said earlier, eating, sleeping, and where you can meet people. So 
have those places to affect everyone in terms of events, the ref being improved would get more people in. Um, the, uh, the ability to find housing, obviously near at the end, but allows people to meet in their own places and having these uh, society events allows people to meet places. So by having, you don't need the biggest budget in the world to handle smaller events, but one of my aims by the end of the year is to fundraise, work our way towards bringing back a boat party, which is something that we've seen the uni do before. Uh, and I'm happy to think that we can see them do it again. Shall I just jump in? Oh. And yeah, go on, Ahmed, whenever you're ready. Um, yeah, to answer your question, uh, I already have some uh, ideas lined up uh, to do with fundraising, sponsorships. Um, actually, I found, <laughs> I found this out recently, uh, seeing that I was looking for sponsorships for uh, my footballing before the pandemic hit. Um, but yeah, there's actually a lot of companies that want to support students. They want to help kind of student unions uh, that then aid students. Um, so kind of getting sponsorship and, and help support from other uh, sources rather than just the budget that we have will in turn kind of increase our budget um, that we can then use for kind of big events. Um, I've, for example, uh, my brother's from Kingston and I saw some uh, ideas that they planned this year during the pandemic um, and the year before. Uh, and it just showed me like the different events that they had compared to us um, and some events that they had, which was like, if like, quite quite fun something very different for example uh shisha garden which was something very crazy a different event something to do with smoking which is not for everyone but something strange i never heard of um but my main aims is to get that student to student interactions because this pandemic has really really affected us um i was actually stuck here during summer when everything was locked down couldn't go back home and living between these four walls in halls has literally killed me so Getting that student-to-student -student interaction is number one priority. Getting people back to normality, people talking, people making friends. Uh, and, and all that is done under an environment, which would be events and kind of um, activities that we can all arrange, uh, such as summer ball that we've missed out in two years, the varsity dinners, um, and, and varsity, varsity in general, the sports dinners, um, and other events that we can use without paying other kind of companies uh, for, the, for those events. We can literally use it on our field. We've got plenty of fields, plenty of greenery and plenty of beautiful uh, spaces on campus that we can use to our own advantage, advantage without paying rent. So yeah, some of the ideas. You're lagging. There we go, lovely stuff. Thank you very much. Um, and Finally, last but not least, on to question five. Um, as said before, Ahmed, you'll be answering first. Um, what campaigns that aren't being run currently would you like to implement? Um, one of the <coughs> campaigns I have in mind at the moment uh, is to do with uh, international students. Um, students coming from uh, Asia, people coming from kind of more towards the kind of the East, um, so I, one thing that I've recognised, um, I'm, I'm a sports rehabilitator, as I said, and we usually have lectures down in 60 Waldegrave. Um, and every time I go into Naila Library, there's a lot of um, kind of Asian um, students that come from abroad to study at St. Mary's. Um, and I see them around in campus, walking about in the library, but they're always segregated. They're always looking. I see other students, like similar to myself, like we just keep on like, looking at them and like as if like there's some strangers when they're actually students as well coming from abroad away from home uh, and are not really recognized so I want to kind of make that bond make people bond together and make friendships internationally and not just within the UK or just sticking to your area whether you're from Surrey or whether you're from wherever you are high midlands or whatever kind of getting everyone mixed together um, because each person I personally believe each person has a, a special characteristic about them uh, some uh, some quality about them and when kind of that quality from one person uh, you add it on with another person from a different country and you keep on adding on it just it's something beautiful something amazing I personally had friends from America that were the exchange students um, and it was a different speaking to them going out with them was a completely different thing to the, the friends I have here from the UK so uh, kind of raising awareness on international students uh, is something very important to me
uh, seeing that I'm also an international student. That's brilliant. Thank you very much for that. And Ben, over to you. Yeah, so um, I think something that I found quite relatable to me uh, in the sense of joining the uni in the first week, it was actually, um, I, I just didn't really find my feet too well socially. Um, and with that, I think a lot of people do go through something similar. Uh, and to avoid that, it, I, it was simple as I had one friend um, who I knew from here, went and had a chat with them. They introduced me to more people, more people, more people. So the point I'm trying to make is when you get those connections built, it's quite easy to then build upon that. So the campaign would generally be it's similar to, I mean, you have Hall Stars already. It's quite sport based. Just as simple as getting people in one area, the, having freshers, having something like that, but not always advised on a drinking bit, bit more as much as there are daytime events. It's almost you have a daytime event on the day that there is a drinking event and people bypass the daytime event if they want to go. To, so it's kind of a having the ability to go to all of them. I think puppy rooms is a really good example where you'd get quite a lot of people turn up and conversations that we had, just building those connections. Because um, I mean, one of my points is uh, it'd be for a fundraiser or allocation of budget but giving uh, senior reses a bit more of an allowance or a built-in allowance to provide activities or however they see fit between their people that they're looking after. Because I know, um, obviously, it'd be a bit different for senior res or wiseman compared to um, a Wardy house. There's a few diff like numbers difference there. But just being able to get them a little bit of something, a bit of help towards it, it could be as simple as buying like a bit of money off a meal or a bit of money towards buying. I mean, we did a rounders game with everyone that buy the rounder set means the senior res isn't out of pocket means that they then get to build on relationships, share it about. That is brilliant. Thank you very much, Ben. Well, for everyone who is watching, that is the end of our questions for today. Thank you very much to the both of you for answering those questions. Um, and yeah, that is it for the Student Life President Hustings 2021. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. And you can vote from next week, the 8th to the 12th of March. Voting closes on the Friday at 5pm. So do make sure that you are voting within this time. Uh, there will be some goodies available for you uh, once you've voted. Um, your names will be put into a prize draw where you can win some innocent smoothies. Uh, some Domino's pizza, uh, some Costa coffee vouchers, and even some SMSU hoodies. Uh, you can follow us at, at St Mary's SU on Instagram to keep up to date with the elections or through our website at www.stmarysu.co.uk forward slash elections. Tune back in on Thursday at 6pm to see our education president, Hustings, where Jonathan Goss, Robin Kumar and Vic Calvino will be answering your questions. Once again, thank you everyone for coming and have a good evening.